let's look at the search feature. I've actually got a route here under routes search JSX, and then this one all movies.json. So search JSX, uh, look at what we've got in here. We are exporting a loader. So this loader looks at the search params, looks for a query in there, and then uh, goes to the database. I got a, I got a, a full text search index on my database to speed that up. Um, and we're just querying anything that matches the text uh, that the user is typing. So over here, when I say something like Spider-Man, uh, it's searching the database to find those things. And then we just return those results. And then I export a component too, actually, a search component that I can use. So kind of kind of cool. And now anybody else can import this. And it's got some state in here to show. This is all just to kind of get this modal uh, thing going on here. I got a bug where I click in here and it disappears, but I'll fix that before I push the code. Um, I mean, that's just that's just React stuff when I go to a, whatever. This is all I'll just React stuff. Uh, but what is relevant here is for what we're talking about is I've got a fetcher. Where are you? Where is that fetcher? Right here. Search. I called it fetcher. So this search thing with use fetcher. Um, I've got a search.form, it's a get, and the action is slash search. So that uh, lines up with where I've got this route mounted at slash search. So anyone can bring in this component and, um, and it'll, it knows how to call its own route. And then down here we just have a plain old input with the name Q on key down. We escape to close stuff and yada, yada, yada. This is where my bug is somewhere. Um, on change, you can hear, you can see that uh, as I'm typing, we're going to submit this uh, form. So event current target dot form is this input elements form or our search dot form that we just looked at. And then uh, fetchers have this data property on them if they have gone to the server and come back and now their data is populated. And so if we have it, then we'll map over it. Seeing some of our old tricks, right? We're going to prefetch the thumbnail. Uh, and then down here, we're going to render a link and we're going to prefetch that. Prefetch those thumbnails on enter and focus and uh, slice off the extract a little bit so we can see it. And that is it. All right, so we can watch. Uh, th this is just normal remix stuff and we already saw it, but we'll see all of the. Um, oh, and I bound it to command key K too, so it'll pop open in there. Boop. So if I say Harry Potter. You can see it's making all of these requests and it's returning back all of this data. So pretty quick, nice little API. Even in production, it's pretty quick. Um, well, let's see it. Let's see in production. Let's go. Compiled worker successfully. All right, let's take a peek. All right, so if I say Harry, Potter. See that? I mean, oh my goodness, that is fantastic. Let's open up the network tab and watch that again. Spider. -Man. So I'm typing super fast. So Remix is automatically canceling those requests because it's like, okay, you sent off a query. We don't care about that one anymore because the user typed one more thing. Um, and I hate when combo boxes are like changing what's down there, even when I've like stopped typing and it's like just throwing things in. Sometimes you got race conditions like this. This is a common interview question. Like, how would you make sure that you have the correct data in the combo box? And the answer is simple. I would cancel the old ones or you bring in something like throttle or debounce or whatever. Those still can get race conditions depending on your server. So Safest thing to do here is just cancel the one that got interrupted because you know you don't care about it anymore. We only care about this one. So this is why we only saw two sets of results show up uh, because in Remix by default, we don't want you to, we don't want users to see um, stuff that's stale and uh, it would be showing results that don't actually match what they typed. Now I'm on, now I'm on a tangent and a soapbox. I'm off. So nice and fast querying the database dynamically, but what if we could, oh yeah, that's what I want to see. How fast is this? 150 milliseconds. So as I'm typing, I'm getting responses back in 150, yeah, about 150 milliseconds. And that's, that's where I'm at in the world. 
Um, so it depends on where the data store is and the user and all that. Um, but I would expect it's decently snappy. I'd probably want to stick like a spinner up here so you know it's working or down here. But uh, what we're going to do is a little bit crazy. I don't know if I recommend this, but we just learned about this application thing down here and uh, this index to be in local forage. I wonder how big the whole set of data is, right? How, how, much, how much over the network am I gonna have to do send to send the whole database to the browser? And then I can just search inside the client. Uh, so I showed you just a second ago that we've got this all movies route. So this is what we call a resource route. It only exports a loader. Uh, and we escaped the dot, so we didn't create nesting. And so we got a all-movies.json. Um, I wonder how big that is. So we just say, hey, select everything <laughs> from the movies table. And then, uh, like I said, pulling out all the stops. We got our max age on here, uh, so we can um, share this with all users so we aren't hitting our database to query everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's generally a static thing, and it'll expire every six what is this 60 24 days times 60 hours. I'm so bad at this I am seriously so bad at it I give up I think that's like a week or a month or something oh well <laughs> uh, so now that I've got this route let's come over to our search route and I've already got the code here um, because this is less relevant to Remix and just stuff, stuff I got to plunk out. Uh, let's look at the client loader. It says, if I don't have all the movies in memory, call replicate movies and then just return the server loader. So we're just going to go keep on doing the normal fetches uh, that we just saw over here. Boom, boom, boom. We're just going to keep on doing that. And then, it's the first time this loader gets called, we're going to call replicate movies. So replicate movies is the thing that has, def well, we've got the memory right there, replicate movies. First time I call it, I set it to empty. I don't know, old trick. Um, so that I can just call replicate movies every time I'm calling the client loader and not have to like worry about like, have I called it yet? Uh, JavaScript is hilarious. But anyway, um, and then uh, I'll say, all right, cache, get it from local forage. And this stuff's just happening in the, in the background after that first client loader got called. This just happens. Um, and then uh, if I found it, then I'm going to put it in this memory thing, right? So I'm doing both. I'm using the persistent index DB, and then I'm putting it in memory. And then, uh, uh, oh, that's the first time I find it from local forage. But if it's not in local forage yet, then I fetch my funny route over here, get the JSON out of it, set it in local forage, and then set it um, in memory. So this is the first time around. But when the user comes back to this page, it's in local forage already. So this is the second time around. I should probably like invert the code so it's the order that things happen in the real world or what the code does, but it's a demo. Uh, okay. <laughs> so this is cached everywhere, uh, my all movies. This is cached on my CDN with um, cache control. It's cached in my browser with cache control. And then, uh, and then it's cached in local forage in index DB, and then it's cached in memory. So when it's time to expire this thing, I don't even know what that looks like yet. I'm just, I'm just playing around on this one, showing what's possible. Uh, I'd, I'd get rid of a few of these spots, I think, <laughs> uh, in a real app, but uh, just wanted to pull out all the stops, make it fast no matter which part of the caching you land in. So, let's try it. All right, I just saved. Uh, go back to my local one. Oh, npm run dev, let's go. Okay, so what should happen is we open up the search box. And if I start typing Spider-Man, we should see uh, we should see some requests to the actual server. So, and then, and then they should stop, right? They should stop going to the server and they should start coming from index DB. So I say Spider-Man 
Oh, that was really fast. Ah, because it was in my disk cache. Empty cache and hard reload. All right. Hopefully it's not in there anymore. Let's go to my application tab. That was, well, like I said, anywhere you land in the spots where it's cached, that's going to be nice and fast. Uh, let's delete the local forage database so we don't have any of that cache either. So my cache should be totally clean. Now, here we go. Network. Spider-Man. Okay. First search goes out. This is cool. This is really cool. First search goes out and, and you know what? Let's put it down here. And we go to the server and then that starts downloading all movies. And I'm typing fast, typing fast, typing fast. And I keep getting, so we got up to spy di. And at that point, we're no longer searching on the server. We are searching in this local forage. Um, this <laughs> set of 36,000 movies. <laughs> and now this is just like smoking fast. And then I can open another one. You know what? Let's open all of these. Um, Let's go here. I keep hitting the wrong keyboard shortcuts. Open all these up and I'm going back and forth. And look, the network network tab is just like literally doing nothing as I go around all of this stuff. Oop, <laughs> wrong keyboard. <laughs> Spider-Man, Craven Hunter. Let's go across the Spider-Verse. Morbius, back, 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 forward, forward, forward. Searching the man from Snowy River 2 and 1. Ah. Uh, so we do fetch some movies, the ones that we haven't seen, but I can just like fly through the back button and I'm just... Good grief, that's cool. I didn't show this code. So when we have our cached data. Um, it's just a very simple like top-down search, that movie of memory, uh, get the title and extract, uh, see if it includes whatever we're typing, and then push it in there. And if we got 20 of them, just get out of here. Uh, you probably want a smarter uh, search than that. Um, and if it's a little bit expensive, throw it in like a, in a web worker. Uh, so you take it off of the UI thread if you're doing uh, this kind of a thing. But again, I'm not I'm not trying to say that this is like a thing to do in production right now. I'm just saying that this is cool and we've got some cool spots in Remix now to do some really interesting things. Um, I'm looking forward to where people take this and where we take it and uh, see if we can make these kinds of things even more streamlined. Because right now there's a lot of code you're going to have to put together yourself. Let's deploy it. Uploading. All right. Take a peek. Open. All right. You know what? Let's not even open up the network tab. Let's just watch how it feels. This is in production. And I'm like, oh, cool, Santa Fe Uprising. I think I took the prefetch off of those, right? Let's put, I want, I want the prefetch back on those. Yep, let's get that prefetch back. All right. Take a peek. Okay. War arrow. Instant. 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 This is all instant because of prefetching. And now I go do a search for Teenage Mutant Ninja. Not bad. Not bad. Instant. Oh, no movie poster. Oops, I'm hitting all the wrong things again. Rise of the Turtles, the movie on Netflix. Instant. Instant. So that's instant because of prefetching. Ah! <laughs> I always hit command space instead of command K. Uh, wow, there are a lot of these. I love this series though. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles straight up first one. 
Ooh, when Raphael used a curse word, my poor little heart as a little kid was just broken. Little nine-year-old like, whoa, Raphael is the edgy one. He swore. Anyway, this is so cool. All instant. Uh, the princess. So cool. Yeah, no movies called so cool, huh? Rebel Moon. Ooh, Star Wars. Yeah, lots of this. Look, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how fast this is. Let's check out the size of the all movies uh, database that we just put in here. So I'm going to empty, cache, hard reload, get everything fresh. Uh, clear this out. And Kung Fu Panda. All right. All movies. 4.4 megabytes. Takes three seconds to download. Not bad. And now we can get, uh, we don't have to hit the network anymore as we're searching for Kung Fu Panda. Uh, so to put that in perspective, four megabytes. Let's go to, I don't know, apple.com. Empty cache, hard reload. 10.5 megabytes. So we're less than half of an apple.com. Uh, so totally, totally plausible to do something like this, uh, depending on the size of your data set. It's, I mean, they add a bunch of fancy movies and animations on here and it looks beautiful and all that. I mean, that's it. That's all we just, that's all a little bit of scrolling, not a whole lot. And that's twice as big as our movies database. Oh, there's one more thing that I forgot to mention. Like th this is really reminiscent of the local first movement, which I'm a huge fan of. I think it's super cool. Uh, but what's really interesting about this is that we've still got, um, it's a little bit different than that. Uh, we've still got, um, if I disable JavaScript, no JavaScript. This is still an SSR page from Remix. This is still just a website. Um, and then we're, we're adding in these layers of caching and data loading uh, to meet all the different needs. Because no, no, no project I've worked on is specifically one thing or another. Like the architecture needs to be fluid. It needs to be flexible for different parts of the, of the uh, page. So sometimes maybe in the admin, you're like, you know what? We're actually gonna do a whole bunch of stuff with IndexedDB and we wanna store most data there. You absolutely can. Um, and then your public pages, maybe you want those uh, to just be normal SSR. Um, and maybe you don't even want the links to like use client-side routing. So you can do that too in Remix. And maybe you want something like this page that's a mix of all of them. We've got, um, we've got HTTP caching, we've got prefetching, we've got a memory cache, we've got a local, uh, uh, sorry, an index DB persistent cache as well. Um, and if you got the chops to know when to expire those caches, you can do some really, really cool stuff with this. Okay, now I'm out. See you later.